I've had this for about eight weeks. Um, there's a, a sharp learning curve because the instructions are translated from Chinese and aren't very good. So here are some things I think you want to know. Um, first off, if this is your first quadcopter, I cannot recommend uh, uh, flying this as your first attempt to learn how to fly drones. Uh, what I would recommend is go get something like this. This was my first drone. Uh, it's an F-180C. C stands for camera. They make one without. Um, it's a simple quadcopter. It's uh, easy to use. Comes with uh, a lot of extra props, an extra battery. Um, it teaches you the basics of uh, quadcopter flying. Um, this thing is basically pretty much indestructible. That's the, the key part that I really like is that uh, you can learn and for about $40 US you don't have to worry about uh, breaking the bank should it fly away, which I've had one do and uh, I'll go into that more later. And uh, So uh, anyway, for uh, it, do not fly the CX-20 as your first drone. It'll cost you money. And well, I'll get to that in a minute. So for about $40 US, perfect, perfect training drone. Um, uh, there are other uh, uh, mini drones out there, probably just as easy to use. I really like this one. This is, like I said, this is my second one. Um, first one flew away. But anyway, okay. Why I can't recommend that is because this thing is extremely fragile and I mean extremely fragile uh, the plastic itself is uh, that's about as good as it, it will deform um, and that's just uh, sharp impacts tend to bend it like this here and, uh, and I also have a break here um, uh, the, the landing gear takes tend to it takes most of the abuse um, we're not talking huge falls either. We're talking, uh, three feet, sometimes less. Um, if you notice on here, uh, this bottom bar, probably to, uh, a lot of the install of these, uh, landing bumpers is, uh, got two screws here. Uh, this is extremely weak. Uh, it doesn't take much of a jolt to cause, uh, these to, uh, sever and you're going to have to end up replacing them. Um, that gets pretty expensive pretty quick and it's annoying if you have to wait for China for these things to come. So I recommend uh, you can do a lot of repairs on this copper uh, copter with a uh, uh, plastic bonder. Uh, this is a Loctite epoxy. Uh, this works good with uh, with this plastic. I know some plastics are hard to hard to deal with. I've had great deal of success with this. Uh, may not turn out to be the prettiest but uh, it does function. Uh, I've had to function uh, repair the. If you look here, I've had to repair the. Uh, the the tower. Uh, the compass is up in here. Uh, it used to be, I guess, at one point the GPS unit. But uh, anyway, the compass is up in there. The, the top cap here is only held on by friction and little tiny pieces of plastic, which also shear off. That's why I have this taped closed. Um, I just didn't feel like spending eight or twelve dollars for a piece of plastic to uh, want a piece of uh, free tape. Basically, we'll fix it. Let's see how I've got mine configured. Is uh, I I had a uh, iPhone 4s laying around. Uh, I wasn't going to go on buy a gimbal and another camera uh, when I already had uh, one like that. Plus, I wasn't sure if this thing was going to fly away. I don't want to spend uh, a whole lot more money. I mean, I've got about. Oh, $250 uh, US uh, invested in the drone itself. And if it flies away, you know, I treat it kind of like gambling money. Uh, that uh, if it doesn't fly away, I'm a winner. Uh, and if I only break it, then I'm only down a little. But anyway, what I've come up with is uh, a little thing on the fountain. It's called the Glyft or Glyft Plus. Uh, it's a tripod mount. I didn't really this this is supposedly their tripod mount. I didn't buy it for that, but I bought it for this little uh, Allows you to uh, I've got a jam nut here and it and a nut for the uh, 
uh, uses a standard uh, uh, photograph uh, tripod mount screw. And uh, it's just held in by friction and a clip. And it takes your phone out and you can put your phone back in. And it allows you different angles so you can, in fact, I use it in this configuration here so the camera doesn't get involved in the uh, Uh, involved with the angle of the uh, landing gear. Uh, if you've noticed, uh, you'll see uh, I got some wire ties, I got some tape. Um, these are the two antennas. They don't tell you to make sure you tape them down. Um, there are little notches when you uh, attach the uh, landing gear that feeds this little wire through. Well, um, this wire tends to migrate even uh, if you don't tape it down exactly where you want it. And uh, when you land hard, this more or less acts like a guillotine and eventually will sever this, this very thin wire on both sides. So uh, I secure it with uh, some wire ties and a little bit of tape. This happens to be duct tape, your choice. But at least it holds the wire in place and keeps it from uh, being guillotined. Just one of those a little obnoxious things. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, wire ties, I've uh, used this wire tie on the back to compress the uh, uh, vibration damper uh, bushings. Uh, that gives the, the camera a little bit. Otherwise, we'd be just staring off at the, at the horizon, and I wanted to see what's down. So this uh, moves it down a couple of degrees and allows you a fairly, act, fairly uh, good video. Uh, I actually like the configuration. Uh, it's uh, been a trial and error, as you've uh, seen on my other videos, but uh, so far uh, it's a working combination for me. Another thing, um, there are plenty of videos out there that uh, uh, show you uh, uh, the unpacking and assembly of, uh, of the CX-20. Uh, um, they leave out uh, what I would consider probably the most critical aspect of the CX-20, and that's the battery charger. Now, uh, they don't ever demonstrate this when they unpack this, so I'm going to show you the most important thing you should do uh, when unpacking this. If you open this end, you'll see that this comes with, if you're from North America, a non-standard uh, plug. This is for a European, so you have to buy a, automatically have to uh, buy a uh, adapter, so this will work in a, a North American uh, outlet. So, but before you even open that, I recommend you just uh, take this very cautiously and set it on the table just like that, and then do this, and then throw it away. Um, reason I recommend that is because uh, the battery charger itself is quite cheap, um, and it I've damaged the original battery that came with it, and I also damaged the extra battery that I purchased. Uh, if you look at a regular uh, LiPo battery, it is supposed to be square, or, or an, a cube rectangle. And when you look at this, uh, after it's been mishandled or mischarged, it will become bloated and rounded uh, in this case. And, hap and this one also lost uh, one of the cells in it, so I can only get like nine volts out of this thing. So basically, that cheap charger that comes with it, I've lost about $50 worth of battery. Um, what I recommend, Again, it's up to you. You're going to spend the money anyway. Um, is I went out and bought this is a, a Tenergy uh, TB6B. Uh, it's a uh, a very good battery charger. Uh, came recommended on the internet. Um, you spend uh, about fifty dollars on this, and it has two plugs: one for the uh, for the uh, input of the charge. And this is the output, and it comes with an octopus full of uh, different connectors uh, for the Tenergy. Now, uh, it does not come with the one. This is called uh, an XT60 connector. Um, it doesn't come with this. If you do a search on your uh, on the internet and find your favorite uh, online retailer, you can find these clips. I found a. Uh, a bag of uh, five male females uh, for about five bucks. Um, it takes a little bit of soldering. If you 
don't know how to solder, don't want to learn how to solder, don't want to spend the money on solder, they do have uh, various uh, ones pre-manufactured that will convert this plug to this plug uh, for about five bucks. Anyway, but I would look into that if I could. The battery charger, um, these batteries aren't cheap. And they're supposed to last five years, and I got uh, maybe three flights out of them. So uh, I wasn't real happy about that. And I had to wait a week for that to show up. And then I had to wait another three days for that to show up. So um, this will give you some time to uh, uh, maybe get your stuff together while you're waiting for your... Uh, if you're waiting for it to come up from overseas, you got about three weeks to get your stuff together. Okay, uh, the other thing, we'll put this out of the way here. You probably bought this because you found about Mission Planner. This is the open source version underneath the bracket here. Uh, oh, the. Uh, if you look underneath the bracket here, you'll there is the uh, USB uh, port for plug-in. Uh, this is not well documented. I did find it after uh, uh, some uh, problems when I uh, upgraded. First, I initially started flying this with the initial uh, software that was on board, and I learned to fly it uh, pretty well. I was pretty stable and pretty comfortable with it, and then. Uh, there's an effect called the toilet bowl effect, which basically when you, after one of the times I uh, uh, crashed it, uh, the GPS would no longer hold it in place. Uh, it would start to uh, circle and the circles would get wider. And it's, it's referred to as the toilet bowl effect or TBE. And uh, so I plugged in the uh, APM uh, mission planner software and updated the software in the in the in the drone th hoping by going through the wizard and the calibration settings that would fix my toilet bowl effect well it didn't quite work out that easy uh one thing they don't tell you is that do not when you plug uh your uh, USB cable into your laptop and into the drone uh it'll start beeping as a low voltage warning um, it's quite annoying, and the most the tempting thing to do is to plug your battery in uh, so it'll quit beeping, but you don't want to do that. I spent uh, three days uh, trying to figure out why this, uh, what it did was uh, mess with the maximum prop speed, which would only get up to, uh, the range is normally 80 to 000, 800 to 1,000, and it set it at 80. I could never get this over a high idle. Um, so when you first attach the mission planner software with the UPS or the USB, make sure you do not plug in the battery. It's going to beep and it's going to beep and it's going to drive you crazy while you're going through the wizard setup settings. But all in all, it'll be worth it. Now, one of the last things I want to cover is probably one of the more important ones is uh, when you use mission planner and if you go through the wizard, it will change the flight characteristics of the CX-20. Uh, it will no longer fly like it did with the original software on board. Specifically what it changes, among other things, is the pitch, which is how far over in either in any direction that it will, uh, it will go. Uh, it sets it to, in my experience, to 22 degrees, which uh, on a calm day is fine. If you've got a, a strong breeze, you'll still you'll lose ground. It'll be like swimming up, trying to uh, go against the current. And uh, so, uh, a more aggressive uh, 35 degrees is recommended. Uh, uh, I've tried this out myself, and I didn't get any trouble on a uh, on a on a windy day uh, because uh, even though the ground uh, wind might be uh, near zero, you get up above tree level. Uh, and mine started flying away. In fact, one of my other videos will show it. Uh, this actually, uh, I set it into, uh, it was uh, flying away. Uh, it wasn't a fly away. It was I couldn't fight against the wind. Uh, I tried to use the uh, return to launch setting, and it wouldn't go it because it couldn't get against the wind. 
so at that point, I forced it into uh, an auto land uh, mode, which uh, fortunately saved the day. A, it kept it from crashing to the ground, and it did land uh, nicely in a driveway of a couple, and they were kind enough to uh, <laughs> call the county police, and the county police were able to track me down and return my drone. Uh, so, so that leads to the other thing is with Mission Planner, you can change the settings of how the, uh, the different modes that uh, the switches will do. Uh, stabilize, loiter, you can uh, read up on those. Uh, return to launch and land. And like I said, landing is not GPS dependent, which means that all it does is try to land and uh, smoothly. So if you're in the middle of a toilet bowl effect and it's out of your control and it's you can't fight against the wind or you can't get it back, at least put it in a landing mode. At least it hopefully will land somewhere that you can get to it. Uh, like I said, I was lucky enough to get it back. It, and in fact, it just clipped a tree, regained its uh, 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 balance, and uh, came to rest uh, on a two-track driveway in the middle of some woods. I got very lucky. I hope this was helpful.